Hi, this is Carol from SkillCheck. Today we're going to be talking about self-storage access issues. It really comes up a lot because, well, people access the space a lot, right? <laughs> so, why is controlling and limiting the access so important? And, you know, there are a lot of reasons that, you know, many businesses do this because you want to make sure that only certain people get on the property, right? And there is a bout of liability to that, right? Because you want to make sure we have, we know who's on the site and uh, that the right people are there for the good reasons, right? <laughs> so let's sort of just start talking about the amount of liability we have also. So you want to have that authorized customer access list or when you're accepting keys to the spaces, um, things like that, know that. And it's, this is true even if you have a well-drafted rental agreement. Even if your rental agreement says uh, and, and exculpates you from everything, you still want to have good policies and procedures around accessing and making sure who has the act, right access and keys to the space and that sort of thing. And employees can have sort of unknowingly uh, made big legal mistakes by handing out keys or cutting off a lock for someone they shouldn't have. So it's really important topic. The employees become sort of that gatekeeper or judge if they sit there and they think, oh, well, I have all the control here. I'm going to make this decision. And I think if you're not sure what to do, you should, or, or it seems very confusing sometimes. I've had, like in the past, I've had, you know, a person pass away and there, and there were like, five people that came by and said, oh yes, I have the authority to get in and I, I'm i on the will and I'm the executor and I'm this and I'm that. I'm like, for all the same person, the same customer that we had, I was like, oh, see, this is why we didn't let anybody have access. And you also increase your responsibility and liability with your tenant if you give out control to someone else or give access to them, cut off a lock for them or anything. So who should be allowed access? Well, your rental agreement is the most important directive that you have about access issues. It really needs to specify the days and hours that a customer can access the space during their tenancy because it's important to know that if they can't have 24-hour access because some people think, oh, well, I can have 24-hour access. Well, we don't like them to have 24, not at all stores, but some stores don't allow 24-hour access. So it's very common to, to limit the hours that they can actually be there. And yeah, and not be doing bad things there. <laughs> so, and also when and why a customer is overlocked. We want to know that if, you know, for example, if they've, they've locked the, the space and uh, the, the lock is not very good, we might put another lock over it because I've had, I've seen things like luggage locks on there. I've seen a shoestring. <laughs> One young guy put a shoestring. He said, the only thing I could figure out to put on it was my shoestring. So I took it out of my shoe and put it on there and, and tied a knot in it. I'm like, no, no, that does not work as um, a, a good way to, to uh, secure your space because your shoestring is not very secure. Also, um, the others who should potentially get into the space. So we had a, a space that the state of California uh, they had, I don't know, it was a lot of spaces. It was probably 30 spaces that they had. And they had lots of different people accessing the different spaces. And it was uh, quite something to deal with, <laughs> especially like, okay, well, who should be in this one versus this one? And it was complicated and complex. And finally, we just, um, the manager did a really good job of organizing it and who should be there and then who should get the keys. And they had them all in a, in a particular little area and the person had to sign for it for the keys. So we knew that it was actually the person and they showed their ID so it really worked out okay. But again, they had a lot of spaces. So we try to help them out with that authorized access list. And, you know, others who come, uh, who potentially want to get into the space and say, oh, well, they passed away or they, you know, they, uh, it's my sister's space and she needed me to come by and get something. So we have to always help people understand why we don't give them access or why we, you know, again, don't allow just anyone to get in there or help them get in there. Also, when we can deny access. And a lot of that is just based on when you are allowed to overlock. And, and again, that is like the lean process. So that tells us a lot about when we can keep people out of the space. And it varies by state. 
So overlocking spaces, when and why customers overlocked? Well, first one is the late payment or maybe a non-sufficient NSF check. Uh, that could be another reason why, you know, that they're late and they gave us a bad check or whatever. The other one would be in lien status. A notice would be sent out that you have the right to legally deny them access. Also, if the lock is missing, so we would do an incident report, we would call, um, send a letter, email, something like that, any, any or maybe all of those. Maybe a latch unknowingly locked in the open position, because sometimes that happens with the slide locks. They don't realize that they locked it in the, in, and it was in the open position, and you can just lift it right up <laughs> with the lock on it. Uh, so there, there are always um, reasons why we might overlock something or lock it in general. Also, the days and the times of accessibility. Your rental agreement should be specific and should state or list out the days and the hours that the customer can actually access their space. And that means the hours of your operation, the holiday hours that you're open or not open. So it's clear that on Christmas day, they can't come get all their Christmas gifts <laughs> out of the space. And that has happened to me more than probably 10 Christmases <laughs> where people had put all of their Christmas goods in the space and rented a space specifically for that because they didn't want their kids into it. And then they came uh, Christmas day to get it and we were closed, the gate was closed. And then they called in a panic and uh, one guy went over the fence to get it. So, and he did, he got it all out and just tossed the stuff over to his wife and climbed back out. It was just, <laughs> it's just never ending, is it? It's just all the fun that we have in self storage. So who should access it? Well, again, who is allowed access besides the renter of the space? One, if the person had a key and a code, well, yes, I, we, we can't really control that, right? If someone gives out their key and the code to the gate, um, the person who's on the rental agreement should certainly have that access. The persons who are maybe on an access addendum, some of you may use an access addendum and that may allow other people to do that. And I have done that in this, say, a sense of, for example, when Xerox uh, in my store in Hawaii, they had uh, people who were drivers that would pick up and deliver the, um, the Xerox machines. So they had sometimes eight to 10 drivers that were going all around the island. Uh, and they would pick up like one that didn't work and give them one that did work. So they were constantly in and out. So finally, we just made a system where the, we would have the, we had the key and we would hand it to the driver and the driver would go get it because it was complicated uh, to, because they had so many different units. It was a bit of a mess, but because they were so awesome, I, I helped them out there. Uh, also, who who's on the rental agreement? That is obviously an important one. Uh, again, there's people with ac access addendums. Uh, if you have an addendum, it's a great thing to use. Also, it would be a court order. If you have a court order to get into a space for some reason that a uh, person maybe have passed away or was a, an entity, like um, I could potentially get something from Xerox saying, hey, we have a court order to get into the space because maybe I wasn't letting them in for some reason. And then they got a court order to be able to get into their space. Also, when can a storage owner or manager access a space? When can we do that? Well, the storage owner, in cases of an emergency, that's an always, because there may be a sprinkler leaking. It could be potential fire, or we could smell fire. That's happened before. Um, and just the safety of the property of the customer's goods, because if we think that if we know that there's a leak, we should try to mitigate it as soon as we can, uh, as soon as possible. Suspicion of a break-in or something dangerous being stored. Yeah, it really is important if you suspect something weird or you smell something. Uh, it could be, uh, I've had goats <laughs> in a storage space and the bat you know, or whatever it was, was, you know, obvious. And there was some uh, straw outside of the unit that one of my managers had in New Mexico. And I was like, open it up. I mean, I'm assuming or, or start getting the customer on the phone and tell them you can't store live animals in space, storage space. What is wrong with these people, right? Suspicion of a break-in or something, you know, dangerous is really 
super important because especially when we know that the in fact the first bombing of the World Trade Center they made the bomb in a self storage unit in New Jersey and just the fact that they were moving in and out of settling tanks and all kinds of uh, chemicals I want my have my managers watch very closely what's being stored if they can and especially watching for those trucks with the uh, lifts on them if it's something really heavy or if you see 55 gallon drums coming in that sort of thing you want to be really careful about the other time that we access a space is for a lien sale and that's obvious but you want to make sure that you've sent out the proper notices prior to cutting off the lock it's really important that you don't cut off locks until you've sent the proper notices Others who may uh, need to or be allowed access or maybe have some kind of access one way or another, who could potentially get into the space then? That's that non-tenant who could get in the space if they have the key and the code, right? Sometimes we don't even know that a non-tenant is getting in. Someone said, oh, well, you know, just go ahead and here's my key and here's the code to, and this unit number 101 and it's right on the left or whatever. And, and they let someone in that maybe we don't want in, but they do it anyway. A person with a perfected security interest could also be able to access that. I've had several of those over the years. One of my favorite ones to tell about is I opened a storage space in lean status and it had um, the machines that you would put on a car to diagnose uh, what's wrong with it. And uh, and so the Chevron company, I, I sent them the lean notices as soon as I found it. I thought, okay, well, I'm going to see if I can get, and I looked up and Chevron actually had um, a perfected security interest on the goods there and it had an address to send the lien notices to so I sent them there they sent me a check for the entire amount they sent a truck out they sent a moving truck they put all of their goods in it now the things that were on the perfected security interest and they, they had the actual numbers on it so I was there when it happened and the other things that were left in the unit <laughs> I had to start all over to get rid of that stuff because I had gotten all the money on it so it had to go back um, into lien status again before I could sell the other goods but it was tires and a bunch of other stupid stuff left in there but I did get the money that they owed which was like $2,100 so it was awesome at least I got that much out of it by using that perfected security interest and getting a hold of Chevron. Also, a person with a court order could have access to it. And I have had that in a situation where um, a kid stole another person's motorcycle and he rented a unit there, put the motorcycle in, and the his friend, not such a good friend, <laughs> who he's, his bike was stolen, actually got a court order to get his, uh, he knew that the, the um, oh my gosh, he knew the motorcycle was in the unit and the particular unit number. But anyway, we did help him to be able to get that back. And the kid had just said he'd owed him money and they, he took his bike and uh, he had paid him the money and he never gave the bike back. So he, he found a way to get it himself which worked and that's all we needed was that court order to open it up and then we gave the, we could give it to the non-tenant because he showed proof that it was his uh, unit and he did bring the police down with him. Uh, also an officer of the law that's in hot pursuit, um, I have had that <laughs> also at storage properties where they have come up to the gate and they said, we just had a guy that stole some money from a bank and he's he's going into the, to he came in here and he went through here, so we need to get in. So we opened up the gate, let him in, and they were, because they were in hot pursuit of that person. So, and they, we also ended up, uh, you know, telling what unit he was in and that sort of thing. <laughs> so he was hidden in his unit. That wasn't too hard to find. <laughs> Cause we knew his name and the customer, I mean, the police knew his name, so we, we got him. A parole officer also has the right to do that. Parolees are still considered to be under the supervision of, uh, of, their, of the prison system, so their stored goods can be searched. And I've done that several times also where they've come into the office and I said, as long as they can show their par parole officer information, uh, and, we, and I like to take pictures of things or copies of it so we can sit, write an incident report saying the parole officer wanted access to this unit and then it all worked out really great. 
Uh, also, the manager or owner of the storage property can do can get into any space for or because the rental agreement gives us or allows that us that uh, prerogative in case we think there's some kind of problem. And again, the fire department would also have the ability to get into a space if they think there's something that might be in there that was dangerous or flammable or problematic. You know, it's always a good idea to write up an incident report. With all of these things that I've just talked about, it's so important to, that you complete an incident report. If you don't have one, contact our office. We can send you one. But it's really an issue involving any access to the customer storage goods. Make, make an incident report. Put it in a file. Upload it to the computer, however you want to do it. But just make sure you save it and you note what's happened, who was there. Try to be really thorough in all of your information about times and dates and people. And, and I like to, you know, especially if officers are going in there, or the parole officer, so we say, hey, can we have your ID or, or we need to write down some information for our incident report that we're, un we're lock unlocking this to allow you in there. So we need some information. It's just a good thing to do, right? But make sure that's all in the software because if you're not there and you've made all of this uh, happen or all of this happen and you move on to another store or to another company, at least it would all be there uh, in the customer's record. Another reason might be to restrict access is because of bad behavior at the site. And you know what? I, look at this guy. Multiple shoes. He's got his uh, iron out there. He's got looks looks like some bleach. The hard part about this is this this guy is actually pretty clean and not in too bad. Okay, I'm, you you know what I'm saying here. I I feel for him. But other customers who want to get up and down this aisle, they can't with this. And I would just go up to him and he'd say, hey, guy, could you possibly kind of not, you know, put all of your stuff out like this? And because it's too much like you're just hanging out here. And but you have to be watched about, you know, staying past closing time and just loitering around the property in general. And it's just not good for business. And it's scary to some people, not everyone, but it's sometimes scary to people. Uh, this was. The I love this one. It's kind of unique because this is pretty interesting because I, I a lot my stores that I've had in Hawaii, they have been multi-level like this. Some people are like, what? What is the, I don't get the whole thing because so there's a little ladder thing there you push and you can get up into your your space up top. And this guy's clearly, you know, I don't know, he's folding, looks like he's folding some laundry up top. But okay. Not only is that guy a problem, but the one down at the bottom, look at him. He's got all his junk in the hallway where nobody else can access it. So you've got to watch about living in this space. You know, the issue of people being able to get around and being able to walk down the aisles. Uh, and there are customers that worry about the, these people breaking into other spaces because you don't know what's happening. You So we can... Um, deny access for people to be in spaces, but it, especially if they're violating the agreement by doing different things. So just be very careful about that when you do it uh, and try to be understanding and not, yeah, it's not as easy as it ever seems sometimes. And you may be uh, even afraid of, I've, I've been a couple of times afraid where I thought, uh oh, better take someone with me to go down there because it just in case there's a problem uh, that we at least there'd be two of us there and one with a, a cell phone or something, a ra radio in the old times, those little radios that we used to take with us. So um, walkie talkies, that just shows you how old I am, right? But all of this is so important. When you think about giving access, denying access, know your store's procedures and make sure you make everyone be try to be a good citizen because we all have to live together at the storage places too and we can do that and we can do that by respecting everyone and trying to make it as great a place to store as possible well thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate all the great comments that people give me especially these trade shows i guess get so many wonderful people that just are that like what, what I do here. And I would love any content or any topic that you would like me to talk about. I would love to do that. 
I'm happy to take on any even tough ones, but please uh, subscribe and like and share this because it's so important uh, that I get some more, a uh, little more than just a K behind something. <laughs> As my son would say, oh my God, mom, you, yeah, you hardly have anything. So anyway, but I just say, hey, it's the self-storage industry. There's not that, well, there are a lot of people in it, but it's, you know, just again, this is free content and I am happy to provide that. And I also want you to uh, give me any good other topics that you'd love to hear. So thank you so much for listening and happy renting.